Welcome back to the show, everybody. Mr. Pop That Thing is in the building. That's me, the one only triple the G O D. Always surrounded by the squadron and you. Yes, you. Yeah, I'm pointing all everywhere. Yeah, man, you're live right here with us. Right here on Team GRF TV. And yo, welcome back to another episode of the Savage Era, baby. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You're damn straight because a year of watching a thing and enjoying it myself is that I come out of my shell once a year to talk about Wrestle Kingdom, which is the culmination of all this New Japan I've been watching all year. And yeah, this is going to be kind of weird because, yeah, because we got two separate ones. I just finished watching day one because I got busy held up with other stuff. But I'm feeling a little emotional a little bit because one of the things I couldn't bring myself to do was watch one of the last two matches of Liger's career. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. Like, I fast forward through it because I couldn't. Sakaguchi got the pin on him and it's just like, I don't know if I'm ready to watch that yet. And it's like, knowing that that's the kind of emotional response I get for someone who introduced me to Japanese pro wrestling back in 90, back in 95, 96, when I used to see him on Nitro all the time and not knowing that years later that I would go back and like watch his back catalog with matches that people told me to watch. There is a reason why this man will go down as one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. There's a reason why. And what I think is a good thing, at least taking a look and not knowing like what's going to happen on day two, was that Light have been all around the world lately on this retirement tour taking pins left and right. And I don't understand it, but I kind of understand why, like, in the sense of what I'm trying to get in the head of the mind of a man who's about to put up the boots for something that he loves, that he want to leave something behind. So, yeah, let Taguchi, let Taguchi get the pin on you, you know what I'm saying? Give him a little shine, give him the rub or whatever. But again, like, I just fast-forwarded to the end to see the result because I just couldn't get it. Like, because I tried, because, like, I watched the first couple of minutes, and then it's like I started getting emotional about it, and I was like, I can't. So I just fast-forwarded to it, watched, like, the last minute or so or whatever. It's going to be hard at New Year's Dash to, like, watch the celebration ceremony. Hell, it's going to be hard to watch his tag match on day two. It's going to be hard because that is going to be the final match of that man's career. And it's like, for someone who has given pro wrestling so much, me as a fan so much, this hurt. Something fierce it do. And it's like, I wish him nothing all the best. And when we talk about day two, I will do nothing more than wish him all the best. It's gonna, I'm, I'm probably going to have tears in my eyes when I watch New Year's Dash, dog. I probably am. But... Yeah, like th thinking about it make me emotional. Thinking about it, it's real to me, damn it. No, not like that. But someone whose career I have come to love and appreciate what this man has done for pro wrestling his whole career, I'm glad that, that, that and I'll say this when we talk about day two, I'll say that, that if I decide to do something about Liger in general, is the pro wrestling gonna have a hole without him in it. That I don't think that even though he hanging up the boots wrestling, they gonna, somebody gonna find somewhere for this man to be. Because that man has great wrestling acumen, a great mind for this business. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to not know that I won't be able to see him wrestle after I watch day two and I'm just like, just a sad scene. But at least he get to go out the way he wants to. He got a chance to get big with it, announce it, do this world tour of I want to do this and I want to go out my way and I can do nothing but respect that. <sighs> Boy. The rest of this card, we, we got some we, we got some under stuff that we need to get into. Suzuki Gun beat my boy LIJ and, and a nice little six man tag. Um... Chaos is the weapon that, that went over on Bullet Club. And it's like, I'll say, talk, well, you know what? Bullet Club ain't even mainly involved in day two. It's like, Bullet Club has been some weird thing 
some weird thing and we're going to talk about one of those weird things that's not part of that weird thing that boy the switch blade jay white we'll talk about him in a minute but bullet club has been in this weird sphere like literally been in this weird sphere since wrestle kingdom last year and even before that especially when, when you're talking about the elite and all that and all that weirdness that went on with that and seeing like bullet club just there now like the only reason Bullet Club still exists, and let's be for real, they sell merchandise family. New Japan ain't dumb. So they gonna keep being Bullet Club and doing what they doing. But it'll be interesting to see what 2020 has in store for the Bullet Club. You know what I'm saying? And and you got Chaos and LIJ and all them. They gonna do what they always gonna do. Because, you know, faction warfare part of New Japan pro wrestling. In the surprise of day one, in the surprise of day one, Finn Juice BGOD and I was kind of like really? Like I was like given given that G-O-D is G-O-D I was kind of surprised at the finish like Finn Juice been putting in work lately no lie but I was literally surprised at that finish match was hot match was hot cause it's like you, you, got, you got great tag team wrestlers doing what they doing at least when you talk about G-O-D David Finley and Juice Robinson. Juice, thank God you got out to WWE family, cause you ain't done you ain't done nothing but prosper in New Japan, and I'm so I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy that these past couple years, Juice Robinson been able to do what he do, and been able to do it and show the world that it wasn't his fault that he did. They didn't give him a chance. A wrestling company gave him a chance, and Juice Robinson been doing nothing but putting in work since then. So. Bless New Japan for giving Juice Robinson the damn chance, but it'll be interesting to really see like how how this is gonna really shake up, especially when we talk about like New Year's Dash and things like that. When things like after, cause like, cause I don't really talk about New Year's Dash a lot. That if we talk about it in the state of when I normally talk about things on the Savage Air, New Year's Dash is just it's the it's the Raw after WrestleMania, like that's what New Year's Dash is. It's like it's the, it's like. You do all this stuff for Wrestle Kingdom and then New Year's Dash and then all the stuff like immediately setting up Super Juniors and things like that. It, it, it gives New Japan a way to really sit up here and like take what we did with Wrestle Kingdom. Let's lay the focus, give people things to do and let them start on their way to do their thing. You got a lot of people who's, whose things end at Wrestle Kingdom and they go to their excursions or do what they do or whatever. And New Year's Dash is just a wiping of the slate. You know what I'm saying? And I really appreciate that that's what that event is by... Why you think they call it New Year's Dash? So it is what it is with that. I'm going to say this. And, and rock with me on this. John Moxley got the United States Championship back. Yes. But here's the truth about that match. I think a lot of people might miss. And this is just me speaking, right? This was a showcase for Lance Archer. And I'll tell you why. You have people literally probably the only thing they're going to watch on this, on this call between the two nights of Wrestle Kingdom are going to be this match and that match with Big Budo and Chris Jericho. Seriously, real talk. you going to have like some real American fans who have got back into wrestling because of All Elite Wrestling because they follow Jericho or they follow Mox. And they finna sit up here and they gonna watch this match and they gonna and like I said they gonna watch the match with with Go Ace and, and, and the and the reinvention of reinvention, Chris Jericho Le Champion. So I really think that's real. Like that match and also that match with Ta with, um, with, with Tanahashi are gonna be matches for showcases for those two wrestlers because. You got a you you probably got ninety nine percent of people who are like laps fans or people who only watch AEW. Who's an ace in a wrestling ring? Like we playing cards or something? Who the fuck is a Lance Archer? We don't know. But here's the thing: the match was hot, but the thing is, from now on, from now on, any match that John Moxley get in that has some stipulation of murder your opponent will always be held up to him and Kenny Omega. Every single time. You just smashed the ceiling so hard you can't build a house no more. So every time John Moxley now gets into a match where it's murder your opponent to win, you always gonna sit up here and you're gonna do this. And it's gonna be 
Is it anything like that match at full gear? Yes or no? Hmm, don't know. Match was hot. I'm like, Lance Archer got DDT through a table. Literally jumping DDT through a table. I'm like, why did you have to hit that paradigm ship on him, Jamox? Through two tables. Dude, dude, dude got laid out for a 10 count, blood everywhere. It was sick. A great match, but again, that match with Jerry and the match you had with Omega is way up here. So anytime, like I said, and I repeat it once more, anytime Moss get in a match where it's murder your opponent, it's always going to be compared to this. I don't want to compare it to that, but what else do I really have to compare it to? Like, I'm not going to go reach down to CZW archives to go really look at matches in comparison to that because that's not the same wrestler we're looking at now. And plus, John Moxley never technically... John Moxley lost the title because uh, because of Tsunami. So it's kind of like, okay. So it's good to see that, you know, we are building this bridge. And again, and we'll talk about We'll talk about Big Buddha and Chris Jericho on the day two on the day two joint. But I got a feeling. I got a feeling. And, and I need y'all to be with me on this when I say what it is that I say. Tadahashi gonna be Jericho. I just got this feeling. I just got the feeling it's what you do for proper booking. He may he he not gonna win the title, no. The eight, go Ace ain't gonna win the title, no. But he gonna be Jer he gonna be Jericho in Tokyo Dome. That just seemed like the thing that makes proper booking sense. In the sense that they've built this up. You got Chris Jericho like, yeah, I let him challenge me for the title. Tony Khan don't care. You know, don't nobody in the elite fuck. And they got this working relationship. So we don't we gonna talk about that with that working relationship because that working relationship relates to something in our main event for the evening that I want to get into, but I just want to just lay that groundwork for that. So it is what it is with that. I am finna say this live as hell. Live as hell. Takahashi Osprey match of the night. In general, period, no bullshit. I don't remember, and it's like, and it's always Wrestle Kingdom every year that always has that one match that has my mouth through the floor, and this was that. Will Ospreay then had one hell of a 2019. Easily one of the contenders for Wrestler of the Year, in general, period, because all, all Ospreay been doing is whooping ass this whole year. Takahashi been on a shelf for a year and for him to come back like yo I want a shot at the, at the junior heavyweight title and it's like yo give him that I'm like yo that that promo was high to pride struggle I ain't even gonna lie Takahashi is your new IWGP junior heavyweight champion and what is the problem like get that thing seven stars I don't know I'm not I'm not Dave Meltzer I'm not gonna do this with you but that match was ignorant like, I was on the edge of my seat, bell to bell. And, and this is not taken away from Naito, J. White, or Okada Ibushi. But I don't know what else you want me to say about Takahashi Osprey other than you need to watch that motherfucker. Because I'm like, I'm just telling you, that match was off the meat rack of zonies. Shout out to my brother, Matt. Because God damn. See... I'm going to say this. Takahashi's Osprey is why I come to Japanese Pro Wrestling. It's why I covet it the way I do and I don't expose it and I come one night a year, well, two videos because it's a two-night event this year of understanding and knowing why it is I love the sport the way that I do. And this match was an example about why I love the way that Japanese Pro Wrestling is so different from the story heavy American stuff that I normally cover. But again, like I say, I sung it's the most wonderful time of the year because this is my one time of the year that I give myself the opportunity to give a little bit of myself because watching New Japan is my personal thing. And I don't want and I and I've said this before, like like how I treat NXT and things like that. That's my special stuff. And that's something I don't want to share. But when it comes to Wrestle Kingdom 
it's a way for me to like get a whole year of stuff off of my chest and even giving that information in my mind is about to cut off because it's been on for four hours thank you very much it's just it is what it is match it at night even given what the stakes are for night two with the with the with the double gold dash and everything Takahashi Osprey murdered the game murdered the game we in 2020 and I might have watched match of the year on January the 4th literally I might have watched match of the year January the 4th I might have literally watched what could be go down as my match of the year but here the thing is we still got 12 whole months of wrestling so from 9 in anything in that like I said though before we get to our other to, to our other two bouts of the evening is I'm so happy for Tanahashi I'm like yo what what happened what happened at the G1 special last year that was heartbreaking that was heartbreaking that that man had to spend a whole year on the shelf had to spend a whole year on the shelf but he came back and won the title but here's the thing that I wonder that because it was booked this way what they finna do with my boy Osprey cause that's the question what do you do with one of the best wrestlers of 2019? The the possibilities are endless. Like, Will Ospreay got his own stuff going on and things like that, but I don't think, I ain't heard nothing about him leaving a promotion to go do other things, because he do all this stuff on the side with New Japan anyway, so it's not really, like, that big of a deal. But I wonder, that, I wonder what's going to see it, especially in, like, with New Year's Dash immediately knowing what's going to be going on with these competitors and things like that. Lean in there. Get in there. Do it. Destino, baby. Mission accomplished. Number one. My boy Naito beat the Switchblade to become your new IWGP Intercontinental Champion, baby. My boy Naito. If I have a favorite Japanese pro wrestler, it is Tetsuya Naito. For reasons. Because he the best in the business. Because he's Tetsuya motherfucking Naito, okay? Destino, baby. Destino, baby. Yo. This was another killer. This was another killer match. I'm like... It's like because of... This weird trek that Naito's been on this year. And that same weird trek... That started last year at last Wrestle Kingdom for Jay White because of the upheaval of Bullet Club and things like that. And with Jado and Ghetto getting on his side and all that. The sky is the, even now, even given all this, the sky is the limit for that boy Jay White. No lie. Even in a losing effort, this ain't finna do nothing to that boy's momentum at all. Jay White had one hell of a year. Regardless of what anybody want to say about what it is that even though that he got a match tomorrow night for what could be immediately what things are, Jay White had one hell of a year, but my boy Naito that had some ups and downs in 2019, he did. And for 2020 to kick off this way for my boy, oh we he one step closer to making history. I'm just like, he one step closer to making history. And it's like, and even given that, is that what I loved about this match and also about the last match, and also about our, our, our main event of the evening. What, another thing that I come to Japanese Pro Wrestling for is the stories being told in the ring. That, yeah, we, the, you, yeah, New Japan got a YouTube channel. Yeah, people cutting promos and things like that. But New Japan has never strayed away from what I love about it by them properly telling stories in the wrestling ring, in the match. This whole thing, this build-up for my boy Naito was in that ring. Jay White, monstrous 2019, was on display day one of Wrestle Kingdom 14 in that ring. And that is what I appreciate about Japanese pro wrestling. Real shit is what I appreciate. Match was hot. Just... Again, Takahashi Osprey, just way better. And not way better just on that scale, but just because that while Nato and Jay White gave me something to love, again, Takahashi and Osprey murdered it. And our main event of the evening, still the champion and the other side of Double Gold Dash on night two, the Rainmaker! 
my boy Kazuchiko Kata over Kota Ibushi. I'm gonna say this before I get into anything else, just just to talk about some booking real quick. If this was normal Wrestle Kingdom, normal Wrestle Kingdom every day, one night Wrestle Kingdom, let's jump in the New Year's Dash. Kota Ibushi would have won. He would have been booked to win this match. Not sitting up here saying that my boy Okada is a damn slouch. Not saying that there is a, there is a reason why Kazuchi Okada is one of the best wrestlers in the fucking world. But just on booking, just 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 us talking about booking, if this was normal, if this was normal Wrestle Kingdom stuff, Abushi would have won. Kota Abushi is another wrestler who had one hell of a year completing this thing that no one has ever done before. Doing all that, getting this shot at Tokyo Dome is like when when he won the G1. I'm like, I was like, my, the first thing I thought when he won the G1 was he going to win the title. Because given what Abushi's year has been like, because of the upheaval of the elite and things like that, when the streets was like, yo, he going to go over to New Japan, not New Japan, over to All Elite, I'm sorry. And then, and then him sitting up signing that contract and things like that. And it's like, well, given what we talked about earlier with John Moxley tonight and on day two with Le Champion, I really don't think we're not that far off, regardless of whatever contract he signed, to another reunion of the Golden Lovers. I don't highly doubt that at all. Even though that when when that boy Kenneth Omega came out to to the um to the to the Megalomania, you know what I'm saying? With the Megalovania, I should say I'm like Megalomania. I'm thinking of other things. And that and, and that thing, it did not. It, it's like it fe it featured a Bushi in it. So it was kind of like, well, you know, they got this working relationship, but given right now what the state of all of these wrestling is, it's like it may not be time for Kota Ibushi to be over there because all of these wrestling, just on a side note, still trying to find somebody to be Chris Jericho. Again, that person not going to be Go Ace. He not going to be Big Big Budo Ace to be Jericho for no type. Again, my prediction is he going to whoop Jericho night two. Then it's gonna be some big all elite, all elite pay per view, and it's gonna be Tanahashi in a in a, in a wonderful show of why Roji Tanahashi is that good, but Chris Jericho's still gonna win because they still need to find somebody to dethrone Lake Champion, and I don't honestly think that may not be Mox either. Now that I sit up here and think about it, now that I sit up here and think about, it, I don't think it's gonna be Mox that's gonna unsee Jericho either. Either he gonna either he gonna get betrayed from within the inner circle, or they really gonna build up a legitimate competitor to book and beat him. And I don't know if that's what that's going to be. Again, I don't know what's up with Kota Ibushi. I really think that probably summertime you you might see him over there in all elite, just doing a little joiner, just joining up, just on some BS or whatever. Do we really need to talk about? Do we need to talk about Okada and ever since San Francisco how they how he been that guy again? For a minute, Okada went nowhere near a title, and he was still the biggest thing in a damn promotion. That should tell you everything about the king of pro wrestling. Everything you need to know about the king of pro wrestling. I ain't even gotta had a title to be the man. Literally, Okada that dude, and he gonna stay that dude. In general, period. I don't care what you tell me. Come, I, I mark some triple dog dirt your ass. Tell me that Okada ain't the king of pro wrestling. Tell me that. No. There's a reason why Okada is booked the way he is. Why he is the man in New Japan. Title or not. Which also leads me to this before we get into what I think day two going to be. I love the psychology of this match. I love the storytelling of this match because it was this Ibushi that we're seeing right now is not the Ibushi we know and love. This is an Ibushi who wants to himself be the king of pro wrestling. And I love the swagger of it. Okada, all challenges. I don't care. Taste you one of these. Rain makeup. All day. Kind of best in business. But again, 
Abushi, that was one hell of a match. One hell of a match. That's like, there was a moment where I almost forgot that there was going to be a double gold dash and that, Ab and that Abushi was going to take it. Real talk. And I'm, I'm keeping it 1,000. I knew coming in knowing what the car was because it's like, because uh, again, like I told you earlier, up until the point when I found out it was going to be a, that that double go dash was a thing. I thought Abushi was was on a rocket ship to go win this title. It's what I thought. Then it became about holding two belts. Y'all not finna y'all not finna give Abushi that responsibility this soon. I honestly think this, this is honestly what I think is going to happen. Naito gonna beat Okada. It's the only thing that makes sense booking wise. It's the only thing that makes sense booking wise. That you put the crown on Naito. That's what you do. That's what you do going into New Year's Dash. You put the crown on Naito. You do that. It's the only thing that makes sense for the immediate future of this promotion. That you that you sit up here and you and, and it's Naito two belts. You do that. Not saying that Okada couldn't hold it or do anything with it, but it's the thing that makes logical sense to do because of the story you are trying to tell with this man, my boy, my favorite professional wrestler in the world, Tetsuya Naito. That's my dude. That is my dude, rap him along with Omegas. Them my guys. Them are my dudes. Two favorite wrestlers on the planet. Kessie Unito and Kitty Omega. I just love what they do in the ring. And it's like, if you're asking for that, if you are if you were wondering who, 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 I, who I love, is them. Because for a long time before that, which led me to truly get into Japanese pro wrestling, it is the phenomenal one AJ Styles. That was my dude. He was the dude, he, going to, to knowing what my boy AJ was doing is what led me to New Japan, to really start digging in. That's why I literally came watch a final match with Jushin Thunder Liger in it because of AJ Styles. Because it was that, because I had, because like when I start getting to New Japan, I got with like-minded people, and it's like, you should watch this match, and this match, and this match. And one of the things I got suggested was a whole bunch of Liger matches. A whole bunch of them, though. Like, cause I sat up here was like, who you like from the old days? Like, I remember that dude, Juice and Thunder Light, he used to be on Monday night, he used to be on uh, Mike Tra all the time. You should watch all these. And it's like, I fell in love. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's a great time to be a fan of New Japan. No lie. A great time to be a fan. But like I say, let's take a look at the, cause I got um, the card up here for night two. Um,. I don't think I don't think Liger gonna win this last match. I think I think he gonna I think he gonna take another pin. That's just honestly what I think. I just think he gonna take another pin. Um I think I think my boy showing yo that I think they gonna they gonna get the um the junior I think they gonna get the junior tag belts back. I think my boy Yo and Show they gonna get the titles back tonight. Um Ain't no I don't think Sonata finna beat my boy Zack Saber. I don't think that's gonna happen. Juice, he finna catch him an L from John Mosley. If this is just a normal match, it's just a normal match. It's just gonna be a couple minutes. He's just gonna get DDT'd into the dirt. Um, I don't. I'm like, I'm kind of torn on Cancer Goto. I'm kind of cool because man, Goto my dude too. Goto my guy, and it's like I don't know. I'm like, I, I'm not gonna make a call, man. Right? <laughs> I'm not gonna make a call because I love me some Tenta and I love me some Goto. I love me some Goto. I do. <laughs> so I don't know about that. Um. Given what it was, I think I think I don't I don't I don't have a call on Obushi and the Switchblade either. I don't have a call on that one because really thinking about like what booking this match and what a win would do for either one of them is that maybe Obushi over maybe Obushi over Switchblade maybe, but that just kind of depends. On what they got for Jay White, because if they got if they got something for Jay White, he might not even need to win this match for Kota Ibushi to sit up here and stay in the picture to do anything. So it is what it is with that. Like I said, like I said, Tanahashi gonna be Jericho. That that's just what my call is because I really want to see more New Japan and All Elite. I really want to see more of that co mingling, and I really think winning that match would do a lot for that. And, and Naito finna become Naito Two Bells. 
That's what I have to believe. I have to believe one of my favorite wrestlers in the world is going to make history. I have to believe that New Japan Pro Wrestling believes as much as Tetsuya Naito as the one and the only Triple DOD believe in Tetsuya Naito. That's what I have to believe in booking. I have to believe that a company believes in a wrestler as much as I do. And I really think Naito can, I really think that booking Naito and giving him both the belts, that, that's something that can, that, that's something that could be a feather in his cap for the rest of his career. It's not, because let's be for real. If we're going to sit up here and say it just from a booking sense of knowing when, when booking goes wrong, and we've seen a lot of that, I don't see why you would book Okada to win both belts. That's not, that's not a feather in, in the cap of the career of what is who is going to go down as one of the greatest pro wrestlers in the history of the damn sport. This is not something he needs. Do the other Destino, baby. Do the other Destino, baby. It's, 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 this is something that, this is something Naito needs. It's something Naito needs for his career because if you a Naito fan, you've been waiting forever for this moment for this guy. You have been. I became a fan of him years ago. I became a fan. Like one of the things I I, I, I crashed on too early when I started watching New Japan. Like, who the hell is this crazy dude with the hair? And it's like, this test with Naito. Watch this. And I'm just like, I love this dude. This dude is the greatest. I love this guy. Shout out to the Charles to the Tokyo Pimp. What's good? Like, I love him, host. This could be great for Naito's career. If they book it. And they should. Naito 2 belt sounds wonderful in my head and saying it out loud. So it should be really, really, really interesting. To really see what Naito has. I'm going to do my damnedest. To try to go back and go watch that first Liger match. I'm going to try. I'm probably going to have tears in my eyes watching the son of a bitch. But I'm going to watch it though. I'm going, I'm going to watch it. And when we come back for night two, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about this. And maybe like it goes out on top. I don't know. But I I, I, I just got a feeling he's going to eat another pen. I, I just think that that's the way like I'm thinking. That eating, that eating a pen is what's best for the business. And you got to appreciate that. That's that, that I think so highly of. I think so highly of someone who has given me so much to enjoy about pro wrestling that sitting up here thinking that that's how he would think because of all the things he said during this whole retirement tour of understanding of how he wants to make this business better. So I really I got a feeling that just for the business he's gonna eat another pen. And just and just and just go to New Year's Dash and just celebrate the hell out of a wondrous career. But we shall see. I am hoping and praying for Naito two belts. It's gotta happen, B. It's got to. I need to see it. But regardless of that, plenty of more show bomb <laughs> for you. But yo, please sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Me, I am, of course, Mr. Pop That Thing. Of course, I'm also Mr. C-R-S-C-K-C-O-C-I-N-E, man. Hashtag entertainment number one dope man. <laughs> I'm, of course, the baddest monster in existence. And don't you ever forget it. Always holding down my six. Squish, murder, and a squadron in the congregation, man, they be praised. And, of course, bring you this heat as always, my lady of rage, Janine, Betsy, Magdalena, and, of course, Marceline, a.k.a. Miss Marcy, who is indeed holding you down from the Uno's, Doses, the Races, and Quad Pro Baby. Yo. If you want a little bit of everything, because we got a little bit of everything. It gets a little bit of the bubble. See, rest and stuff. Don't worry about that. But, yo, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Like it if you appreciate what I had to say about night one. Dislike it if you don't. Hit me down in the comments. Down below and immediately in the description, all of the ways you can get at me on social media. Feel free to do so. And yo, if you want to support the show with your cookie, 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 cash money, you can do so via the PayPal link below or or you can join my patrons, my main man and our partner in Hentai, Ryan Bomber, and of course, my family, Young Money Bags, my boy Drew, holding me down on a Patreon tip. I love what you do, fellas, putting in that kitty. Love you always. Appreciate the love. And if you want to join them, feel free to, man, like, man, you can support me on Patreon for more for a dollar. I'm like, we, we trying to figure out what to do to give you a reason to, but you want to throw something in the kitty, we got a kitty for you to throw it in. But seriously, what did I tell you earlier? 
Sit back, relax, and stay tuned. We got more Wrestle Kingdom. Once I sit down and watch a Liger match without crying and actually sit down and enjoy another five hours of wrestling a day too, we'll come back to this and we'll talk about the end of Jushin Thunder Liger's career. And we're going to find out if it is indeed <sighs> Naito Two Belts, baby. We're going to know what it is. So, plenty more show for you. And we've got it right after these commercial messages. <laughs> Naito Two Belts. Say it with me, y'all. It's Naito Two Belts. Hell yeah, baby. More Wrestle Kingdom, more show for all of y'all right after these motherfucking commercial messages. 